All right, so which Canadian bank would I invest in for dividends? All right, so in Canada, I guess the four biggest or the five biggest is BMO, Bank of Montreal, which is BMO.to. Then you've got CIBC, which is CM.to. Then you've got Royal Bank, which is RY.to. And you've got TD, which is TD.to. And then you've got Bank of Nova Scotia, which is bns.to so if we look at market caps to see which one is currently the biggest bank of nova scotia is sitting at 68 billion market cap td is sitting at 108 billion market cap royal bank is sitting at 124 billion market cap cibc is sitting at 37 billion market cap bmo is sitting at 47 billion market cap so you can see that the two biggest ones are rbc and td that are close to each other and then you've got Bank of Nova Scotia, and then you've got BMO, and then you've got CIBC pretty far. So let's start with CIBC right now. It's got a, it's got the highest dividend yield. It's got 6.87% right now, and at some point it was above 8% dividend yield. But if we look at the chart, there's something I don't like about CIBC or the chart of CIBC. You could see that before the 2009 crash, it was trading at 102. 102 before the crash. Right now it's trading at 86. So look at how many years imagine someone who bought it at 102 back in 2007 so 13 years later the stock is trading below their purchase price that's pretty annoying 13 years to see your stock trading below what you bought it at yes the person got dividends for 13 years for sure and dividend increases as well but still is annoying to see that your capital has dropped after 13 years and there hasn't been a split the last split was back in 1997 so someone bought it in 2007 it took them about until until uh, 2014 so it took them about six years to recover and then all of a sudden they're back to 2004 numbers and even 2009 numbers and who knows how long it'll take for them to recover back again to their purchase price but if we look at the dividends they've been receiving, so of course they've been receiving good dividends. So the last dividend paid by CIBC was $1.46 per quarter. And you could see that back in 2007, the dividend amount was about 77 cents. So you could see that in 13 years, the dividend has gone from one from 77 cents to $1.46. So the dividend increased 89% in 13 years so on average in the last 13 years it grew by about six percent every year on average so that's not bad so knowing that it pays right now if you buy cibc it pays 6.87 percent assuming that the dividend growth remains the same fundamentals of the company remains the same and they're able to grow their dividend at the same rate they were growing in the past so if if their dividend is growing at six percent every year, in ten years you could end up with a div in ten years you could end up with a yield of about eleven percent on your initial capital and your initial cost. So if you put in ten thousand dollars in CIBC right now, you'd be getting about six hundred and eighty-seven dollars per year in dividends. But in ten years, that same ten thousand dollars, regardless what that ten thousand dollars is worth, whether it's worth more or worth less. But the income you're going to be getting from that $10,000 you put today, in 10 years, you could be getting about $1,100 from that same $10,000 without doing anything. If we look at BMO with $47 billion market cap, it's got 5.66% dividend yield right now. And the chart looks better for BMO. You could see that in 2007, before the crash, it was trading at 69. And then right now, even after this historical crash we're going through, it's still trading above the highs of 2007, so that's good. The lowest point in 2009 was about $31. And before we actually drop right now, the all-time highs of BMO is about $102, $105. So in terms of capital preservation, I find BMO looks better than CIBC because, just because it hasn't dropped below the 2007 highs. We're still quite far from the 2009 numbers. If we look at dividends, Last dividend it paid was a dollar six, and if we go back to let's say 2010, the last dividend was about 70 cents. 
So in 10 years, the dividend increased by 50%. So that's an average increase per year in the last 10 years of 5%, which is not bad. If we look at a 20 year period, actually let's stop at 2002 because it was a split in 2001. So if we go back to 2002, you can see that BMO was paying 30 cents in dividends. So that's 18 years ago. And right now they're at dollar six. So in 18 years, they've tripled their dividend. So in 18 years, on average, their dividend grew by 14% every year. So this is a much better number. So obviously, we don't know what will be the growth rate going forward. We don't know if it's, they're going to continue at 14% per year average or 5%. So let's just use something in between, let's say 10%. Let's say they continue to grow their dividend by 10% on average year after year. So if their current dividend yield is 5.66% and they continue to grow 10% every year on average, you can expect your yield to be at about 10, 11% after 10 years. So if you put $10,000 in BMO right now, you'd be getting $566 per year in dividends. But in 10 years, that same $10,000 would get you about $1,100 without doing anything. Now, if I look at Bank of Nova Scotia, market cap is $68 billion. Uh, right now, the dividend yield is 6.38%, which is not bad at all. Uh, and if you look at the chart, you could see that 2007 numbers were about was about $53 and the highs was about the high all time highs for Bank of Nova Scotia is about 80, 81, 83, actually. Um, and then with this crash here, it dropped to 57. So it's getting close to the all time highs of 2007. But we're, it's still far from the 2009 lows. So it looks better than the CIBC chart because it's still above the 2007 high. So it, there's better capital preservation than the CIBC stock. CIBC stock has dropped below the 2007 numbers. It took forever to recover from the 2007 highs. So um, Bank of Nova Scotia and BMO in terms of capital preservation look better than CIBC. Dividend is lower than CIBC, but let's see how um, what the growth looks like. So the last dividend was 90 cents. And let's go back as far as we can just to get a good average. Let's go back to 2000. Uh, let's go to 2007, I guess. So 2007 dividend was about 42 cents. 42 cents it was the dividend in 2007 and 90 cents in 2020. So that's about 13 years. So 90 divided by 42 gives me a growth of, so they've doubled their dividends in about, uh, with, I said 2007, right? 42 cents, so they've doubled their dividends in 13 years, which is pretty good. So let's see what kind of average return that is in um, per year. So that's about an 8% average return per year for uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, which is not bad, of course. So if we assume the same growth rate for the next, let's say, 10 years for the dividend, so times 10, so that means that if you put in $10,000 in Bank of Nova Scotia right now, you'd, get, you'd be getting about $638 in dividends per year. But in 10 years, you can expect that same $10,000 to give you about... Six times 6.38 to give you about 12% yield, so to give you about $1,200. So that same $10,000 in 10 years can give you $1,200 in income in dividends, while right now it's giving you $638. That's a, assuming that it grows their dividend at the same rate it has been growing in the past 13 years. Obviously, no one knows what's going to happen, but I'm just assuming that it would continue the same way. But it gives you a good idea of the potential of dividends you can get from Bank of Nova Scotia. Who knows, it could be higher, it could be lower. Uh, let's look at TD with a market cap of 108 billion. It's got a yield right now of 5.27% and the chart looks way better than the others. You could see that 2000 highs was 34 and the all time highs is 78. So even with this drop, we're down to 60, we're still higher than 2007 numbers. So in terms of capital preservation, someone that bought it in 2007 went through the crash of 2008, 2009, 
they're not that disappointed right now even though we dropped a lot because they're still they still have more money than what they what they had in 2007 all-time highs the, the lows of 2009 was about 19 18 plus they've been getting dividends all this time so TD stock definitely looks better from all the other banks we just looked at. And now if we look at the dividends, you could see that last dividend it paid was 74 cents. And if we go back to, let's say 10 years. So 2010, it was 30 cents. So from 74, so from 30 to 74. So in 10 years, 74 divided by 30 gives me 2.46 minus one times 100 divided by we said 10 years so it's about 14 percent increase on average year after year just in the dividends that's pretty good right now that's the best amongst the other banks we looked at let's look at a five-year period just to keep it smaller so 74 to 47 cents in five years so 74 so 74 cents divided by 47 did i say 2015 yeah 47 so 50 57% increase in um, in 5 years so on average that's about 11%. So yeah, it's pretty pretty high. So let's say let's say TD continues at the same growth for their dividends. So in the next 10 years you could see about an 11% times 10 years so about 110% increase of the current dividend. So if you put about 10 so if you put about ten thousand dollars right now in TD, you'd be getting about five hundred dollars per year in dividends and income from TD. But in ten years, that income can grow to about twelve hundred dollars or eleven hundred dollars per year without buying any added stock. That same ten thousand dollars would generate about eleven hundred dollars in dividends. And that's if you don't even that's if you don't reinvest the dividends. If you actually reinvest the dividends that you're getting to buy more. TD stock that gives you more dividends, you're seeing a, a much higher rate because it's being compounded. So finally, if we look at our Royal Bank with a 124 billion market cap, it's got a yield of 4.94%. So it's actually the lowest yield amongst the, all the other banks. So let's look at the chart here. So it's got a pretty nice chart. So 2007 highs was about 55 and all time highs is about 109. And right now, even after this crazy crash, we're at 88. So 88 compared to the 2007 highs, we're still higher than the 2007 highs compared to the 2009 lows, 30. So we're still much higher than 2009 lows. So even with the crash, we're still sitting in a positive position. So if we look, so if we talk about capital preservation, it, this one definitely looks the best amongst the others, which would probably explain why it's got the highest market cap. Uh, let's look at dividends. So last dividend it paid was about a dollar five. Let's go back ten years. It was a fifty cent. So it doubled its dividend in uh, ten years. So if we assume the same growth in dividends in the next ten years, then ten thousand dollars with and ten thousand dollars with Royal Bank today would give you about five hundred dollars in dividends. But in ten years, could give you a thousand dollars in dividends. That's if you don't reinvest the dividends and buy more. Royal Bank shares. So just based on this quick analysis, without going into the fundamentals on the future business projections, future cash flows of the companies. So just quickly looking through the charts and past dividends. So definitely my two favorite Canadian bank stocks that I would buy for dividend purposes would be either Royal Bank or TD. First of all, because of capital preservation, dividend and dividend increases. So these would these would be my two bank stocks that I would personally look at, and as a consumer, I think I prefer TD over Royal Bank, but um, obviously Royal Royal Bank's numbers is better. So let's lo let's look at revenues quickly. So for Royal Bank, forty five billion in twenty nineteen with a twelve billion in net income. TD has a four had a forty billion revenue in twenty nineteen with an eleven billion net income so royal bank is slightly higher bank of nova scotia 30 billion so lower with uh, a net income of 8 billion so yeah lower than td and rbc let's look at bmo bmo 25 billion in uh, revenue in 2019 with a net income of five so actually it all seems to to make sense 
and CIBC 18 billion in revenue with with 5 billion net income yeah so RBC is definitely the biggest all right so let me let me know what you think of this uh, quick analysis let me know which Canadian bank is your favorite in the comment section below and like always if you're going to open an account with Quest Trade to trade on stock market use my referral code in the description below the video to get up to $250 back thanks for watching